All right, sorry for that delay. Um, good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. So my name is Srishti, and today I will be talking about some work I have conducted with my mentors and collaborators on integration of cues in emotion inferences. So we don't have direct access to other people's minds, but we do make inferences about others' internal states, such as their feelings, uh, based on the cues that are available to us. And this is what we often refer to as emotion inferences. So when we infer what someone else um, is feeling, it has consequential effects on our decisions and actions. For example, when we're making moral and legal judgments, when we're trying to negotiate a contract, or when we try and provide support to a loved one. And in my work, I'm really interested in understanding how people infer others' emotion states using two widely examined cues, namely facial movements and situational context. So, um, a majority of the existing work suggests that inferences that are made from facial movements alone often do not capture the complexity of emotion inferences in everyday life. So, for example, if uh, people um, are shown this image of a person screaming, they're likely to infer that this person is feeling disappointed. But when presented with the corresponding situational information, such as this person just won a point in a crucial game, people are likely to infer that this person is feeling exhilarated. So inferences that are drawn from facial movements alone um, often change in the presence of descriptions of social situations. However, classic work using these uh, cues, the facial and situational cues, has often focused on establishing the dominance of one type of cue over the other by using clear cues that often contrast in meaning with one another. Now, these paradigms um, inadvertently prime participants to ignore one cue over the other when this might not always be the case. So in real life, people likely integrate information from cues to infer what someone else is feeling. Um, and one way in which we can examine this integration is by formalizing and testing theories of how people reason about others' emotions. So people may hold um, lay beliefs that situational um, outcomes lead to experiences of emotions. And these experiences of emotions then in turn lead to expressive behaviors, such as, such as facial movements. Um, and if people are equipped with this causal model, then Bayesian inference can be applied to estimate the likelihood of inferring emotions given an agent's uh, situation, uh, given knowledge of an agent's situation, as well as their facial behaviors. So building on this Bayesian network, um, an equation for integration of facial and situational cues was derived by Ong and colleagues. Um, and this equation uh, or like this uh, model of Q integration basically um, captures people's beliefs about inferring emotions given knowledge of an agent's situation as well as their facial behaviors. I won't go into the specific derivation of this equation, but I will illustrate the components of this equation using an example. So for instance, when observers are shown this uh, situational information um, suggesting that a tennis player has just won a point and asked to infer the probability um, of exhilaration given this situational knowledge, you can expect people to infer a high probability of exhilaration. On the other hand, when people are shown this image um, of a person screaming and asked to infer exhilaration, you can imagine observers inferring a low probability of, exp uh, of exhilaration given this facial expression. Now, together with these estimates, as well as people's prior um, or baseline expectations of someone experiencing exhilaration, we can compute the probability of an observer inferring exhilaration in someone who just won a point on a game and is screaming. Alternatively, we could also expect that observers um, infer emotions based on only one source of information instead of integrating both of the cues. And we can test this by comparing the cue integration model to two simpler models that capture people's um, utilization of either just the situational information or the facial information alone. So um, current work examining um, this cue integration model uh, shows that people's inferences of others' emotions based on knowledge of situation as well as facial behaviors are best explained uh, by the base Q integration model. 
And this work used computer-generated facial expressions along with outcomes one from spinning a wheel as contextual cues. In more recent extension of this work, uh, researchers have used real world naturalistic expressions, but again, paired with a limited set of contextual cues that involve outcomes from a tennis match. So although really compelling, um, these, this work basically leads to important areas of extension um, and future research that we address in our current work. So first, um, the cues used in existing work have a limited diversity of naturalistic expressive behaviors, as well as context, context compared to people's real life experiences. So in our work, we test the model using cues that have greater diversity and complexity, so thereby enhancing the ecological validity um, and test of these models. And second, the limited diversity of these cues might likely uh, restrict the emotion categories that are being captured in this work. So in our work, we extend the application of these models beyond just overall emotion inferences to inferences of specific emotion categories, for example, anger, happiness, pride, et cetera. All right, so to achieve our goals, we basically used an archival data set that was collected by Limao and colleagues that includes a more diverse set of descriptions of social situations and portrayals of those situations by professional actors. So for example, um, the top portrayal in this, uh, in the top portrayal here is for a situation where a soccer dad sees his daughter win um, a goal or a, a winning goal in a championship game. And there were a total of 604 such pairs of facial portrayals and situational outcomes um, that likely uh, provide more complexity and realism um, of people's real lives. The data set itself consists of ratings on 13 different emotion categories using a dichotomous, uh, using first a dichotomous choice, followed by uh, an intensity rating on a four point Likert type scale. Um, and these ratings are given across three conditions. So ratings are present for descriptions of social situations, for actors' portrayals of those situations, as well as for the combination of these two cues. Uh, each participant also provides ratings in only one of these three conditions um, for about 30 stimuli. So moving on for our analyses, we first compute um, the model estimates. So ratings from the situation only condition are used to capture beliefs that situation outcomes lead to emotion experiences. And then ratings from the face only um, condition are used to capture beliefs that emotions lead to these expressive behaviors. Finally, the combination of these along with people's prior expectations are used to compute the Q integration model estimates. Um, and for our emotion priors, we essentially uh, collect them empirically by asking people um, their likelihood of, ex of, of perceiving em emotions, all of the 13 uh, different emotion categories in their everyday life on a seven point rating scale. Um, finally, we compare all of these model estimates to people's empirical judgments of emotions given not both the facial and situation cues. Um, and, we, uh, and this uh, comparison basically helps to determine which set of beliefs best capture people's uh, reasoning about inferring others' emotions. So first, um, let's look at the overall emotion inferences um, using this data set. Um, the graph, sorry, the graph I will present now basically has um, bars that represent the Pearson model co like correlations for each of the three models marked with the 95% bootstrap confidence intervals. Um, and what we see is that the situation only model had the highest correlation value, followed by the base Q integration model and the face only model. We perform pairwise comparisons um, for these three models, and we find that uh, there are significant differences amongst the correlation values of all of these models. And these results also corroborate with the root mean squared estimates uh, that we compute. So these are error estimates, which basically uh, mean that lower values um, signify better fit. So we see that the situation only model had the lowest RMSE value followed by the Bayes um, Q integration model and the face only model. So overall, this pattern of results suggests that uh, people's inferences about others' emotions are best explained by their beliefs that emotions are caused by situational outcomes, and that these beliefs alone are more relevant in inferring others' emotion states uh, than when combined with their beliefs about emotions leading to uh, facial expressions. 
they also imply that people rely on situational cues heavily, um, especially when they represent a more diverse and complex uh, set of descriptions of situations. I also just want to note here that I'm not presenting um, the core, the scatter plots for these correlations because our data set included uh, a large number of observations. So visually, those pl plots don't add anything important. But in case anyone's interested, I do have them, and I'm happy to show them later. Uh, moving on, we next examined um, the variation in the model fit across the different emotion categories. And we performed um, for that pairwise comparisons of the bootstrap confidence intervals for the difference in correlation values of the three models across the 13 different emotion categories. And what we find is that though the overall pattern um, was largely consistent across emotion categories, there is some variability. Um, in terms of consistency with the overall pattern, we find that the face-only model systematically had the lowest correlation compared to the two other models. This suggests that for all emotion categories, people's inferences were not best predicted by their sole beliefs that emotions lead to facial movements. But we also find that the situation-only model correlation was not uniformly higher than the integration model um, across all emotion categories. So consistent with what we had found in our overall pattern, um, the situation-only model had the highest correlations for categories of awe, embarrassment, fear, happiness, sorry, fear, interest, pride, and shame, which suggests that uh, people's beliefs about situations leading to emotion experiences best predicted inferences of these emotion categories. However, the situation-only model did not differ from the Q-integration model, for categories of anger, contempt, disgust, sadness, and surprise. And it was significantly lower for categories of amusement and happiness. So when inferring amusement and happiness, people, uh, people's inferences were best predicted by the Q-integration model. So overall, these patterns of um, results corroborate uh, with some of our a priori predictions about variability in base rates of emotion expressions, leading to uh, the variability in model fit. So the emotions where people primarily relied on situational cues, such as fear, are also reported in the prior literature as emotions for which people are least likely to encounter facial expressions in their daily lives. And emotions where people primarily integrated cues, such as happiness, are also reported as being most frequently experienced expressions in their real lives. So this um, suggests that base rates of encountering expressions of emotions likely contributes to, uh, to whether those expressions are integrated in people's inferences of emotions. But this also implies that there is perhaps no single story for all emotion categories and that variability across emotions should not be ignored. So to conclude, uh, we can say that in, uh, from our work, people's inferences about others' emotions based on access to both facial and situational cues were best predicted by their beliefs that situation information leads to uh, emotion experience, but that there is some variability across emotion categories from this overall pattern. As we see that when inferring categories of amusement and happiness, uh, people integrate facial um, and situational cues, suggesting that beliefs about these emotions leading to facial expressions indeed in uh, are integrated into their inferences of emotions. Uh, but why do these findings, you know, really matter? Um, and so we believe that our uh, results kind of hold pertinent value um, in today's world, where there's a booming industry um, dedicated, you know, to uh, instilling machines with the ability to infer emotions by designing algorithms that are based solely on facial expressions. Um, and our work amongst others in the past signify that a face-focused approach of inferring emotions might fall short of capturing the complexity of emotion inferences in real life. Um, and also that generic models that ignore variability might not be sufficient to capture the realism of this phenomenon. This is kind of evident from some real world implications such as Microsoft recently retiring their facial recognition tool that claimed to identify emotion, as well as experts questioning claims about facial recognition algorithms and tools being able to infer emotions. However, we do recognize that there's a long way to go and we need better behavioral models of emotions before we can implement these out in fields of technology or clinical psychology. So some of our future directions in pursuit of those goals is to continue unpacking 
the uh, information about facial and situational cues and the features that are associated with these cues to understand how people infer others' emotion states. We also plan to examine variation across individuals in their tendency to integrate versus rely on single cues. And finally, we plan to use more naturalistic stimuli when examining computational models to enhance our understanding of these real world uh, phenomena. Altogether, I just wanna conclude by saying that we know that emotion inferences are a much more complex process than simply reading faces. And in fact, there are many other cues uh, than the ones I talked about that people likely decipher when inferring emotions in others. So we hope that future work will help in the field will help contribute towards building a comprehensive framework of emotion inferences that can capture the realism of this phenomenon. With that, I would like to thank my mentors and collaborators, Dr. Maria Gendron and Dr. Julian Yara at Inger for their guidance and expertise on this project, as well as members of my lab for their feedback. Thank you so much.